welcome from the Digital Heritage Research Lab of the Cyprus University of Technology in Limassol, Cyprus. Today is the ICOMOS International Day for Monuments and Sites and we want to celebrate it with you. ICOMOS is the International Council of Monuments and Sites. This year, the initiative focuses on the topics complex past, diverse futures. Our lab is running the ERACHER Mnemosyn project. Mnemosyn is a unique EU-funded project centered on holistic documentation of the digital cultural heritage life cycle in support of existing and potential user needs. For this uh, reason, today we want to provide a reflection on the future of digital heritage and we produced for you a special video. We asked for a cultural heritage sites from South to North Europe to answer the following uh, questions. What is your long-term view on the role of digital, digital technologies for conservation, management, communication and engagement? How can these systems address your current and future challenges at your, uh, at your site? What is your ideal vision? Enjoy the video. Hello, my name is Mark Oldham and I'm an archaeologist at the Norwegian Institute for Cultural Heritage Research. Digital technologies have undoubtedly changed the way we do archaeology, both in the field and in how we communicate with the public and other stakeholders. In terms of field methodology, we see how GPS and GIS have become the norm for surveying archaeological structures and finds, replacing the old technologies of pegs, lines, pencils and paper. Image-based modelling has altered the way we document in both plan and profile, allowing us to create images in both 2D and 3D that present archaeological information in ways that are scalable, navigable and detail-rich. In addition, GIS databases have enabled the efficient collation and combination of survey and documentation data, allowing for easy linkages between geographical, quantitative and qualitative data sets. These technical advantages have undoubtedly improved the quality of our documentation, but we also need to recognise the challenges of the immense increase in data that has followed. Issues regarding storage, file compatibility and future-proofing are challenges that seek good solutions. Shared standards and collaboration across institutions are essential in order to draw long-term benefit from the boom in digital data. We also need to be aware that we can end up with two classes of archaeological data, digital and analogue, that are viewed as good and bad, rather than being of equal merit but in different formats. It's imperative that this technical shift does not void pre-digital work. Digitalization and secure archiving is crucial to maintain the accessibility and usefulness of this knowledge. The great advances of digital technologies in recent years has become very much in focus in this year of the coronavirus pandemic. Working from home has become much more familiar and meetings and conferences have gone digital. But we've also had to digitalise our engagement with the public. In our case, this has involved more videos and posts on social media. But we've undoubtedly missed both person-to-person -person interactions and the shared frameworks that have previously helped structure our efforts, such as the European Heritage Days. We must also acknowledge that access is a key issue and that digital technologies are simultaneously inclusive and exclusive. Awareness of this fact has grown throughout the course of the year and it's something that we need to remember when things return to normal. The diversity of the public must be recognised when we th think about how to facilitate engagement and conversation. We need to tailor the formats and platforms we use to their levels of digital access 
and their digital skills and preferences. This requires, crucially, a better understanding of what the public wants and how they want to benefit. Information that will to a large extent steer our digital interactions. My ideal vision is that we to a much greater extent put people at the centre of our digital work. This applies equally to our work in the field as it does to dissemination and public engagement. The idea of public benefit is central to much of the archaeology that we do. The rationale behind the polluter pays principle of development led archaeology is that the public should be cons compensated for the destruction of the archaeological heritage. As such, all of our work should be seen as for the benefit of the public, and this includes our work in the field. I would like to see more of our raw data being made easily available in formats that are accessible and ideally free of charge. We also need to consider the future of physical finds in a time of both high quality digital copies, maxed out museum stores and reduced funding for museums and find conservation. To what extent does a find in a drawer, unseen and unused, really serve a purpose? Would it not be better as a digital copy, easily findable, shareable and viewable? The past year has in many ways transformed how we use digital tools and shown that the adoption of technologies sometimes reaches critical mass suddenly. While we cannot predict the tools that we will be using in the future, we can make sure that we use them in a way that enables co-creation and shared benefit. The long-term view of Iminatum Archaeological Park includes a digital database for researchers, digital storytelling for visitors and digital education for young people. We accept conservation not only as a practical field but as a science with a multidisciplinary approach based on a large set of collected and sorted data. We accept the digital storytelling as the most important approach of modern heritage interpretation which allows the involvement of visual experience in the traditional narrative. Young generations should be the focus during the process of visitors' engagement, where they would recognize the values of heritage using their own digital means. The centuries along the construction left only the foundations of ancient Viminatium, while a half century long destruction done by the strip coal mine left a dead and sterile landscape. We offer our visitors both the live experience by guiding them through the landscape, but also multimedia by using digital reconstructions in an effort to bring ancient history back to life, provided by international projects. The Minatium is being excavated throughout the year. Enormous amounts of information are obtained daily, using up-to-date digital equipment and software. One scientific project led by the Institute of Archaeology and financed by the Serbian Science Fund deals with the conservation of the Roman sites in the Nubian Limes, set on the UNESCO tentative list, Frontiers of the Roman Empire. The goal being the creation of the large digital database with tens of thousands of photos and samples of mortar from the sites. Additionally, our team cherishes active engagement of visitors, especially young people, in an effort to promote value of heritage. We participate in the International Erasmus Plus projects where heritage is promoted as an important part of non-formal learning of young people with the use of digital tools. The future challenge is to become the one of the primary educational centers in the field of archaeological heritage. An ideal vision for Viminatium includes the use of modern digital tools for each segment of its functioning. This implies the development of wide databases for the benefit of both the professional and research community, the interaction with visitors using digital and live storytelling with the goal of creating a complete experience, and the engagement of young people in the preservation of heritage in their neighborhood, their country and the world using known digital skills while recognizing and sharing universal values.
Noi siamo Samantha Mariotti e Stefano Bertoldi, eh, assegnisti di ricerca dell'Università di Siena per il progetto CAPI, eh, collina accessibile di Poggio Imperiale. Ci troviamo al Parco archeologico e tecnologico di Poggi Bonzi, in provincia di Siena. Su questa collina, a partire dagli anni 90, si sono concentrate le indagini condotte dal gruppo di ricerca dell'area di archeologia medievale del Dipartimento di Scienze Storiche e dei Beni Culturali dell'Università di Siena. Il sito, ancora oggi sotto indagine, è caratterizzato da fasi di occupazione insediativa dal periodo sarto antico fino al primo rinascimento. A partire dal 2014, inoltre, il parco si è arricchito nella sua offerta culturale con la costruzione dell'archeodromo, un open air museum che mira alla progressiva ricostruzione in scala 1 a 1 delle capanne di IX secolo rinvenute nel corso dello scavo e che è diventato scenario per eventi di living history svolti direttamente dagli, ar dagli archeologi che hanno indagato la collina. Il progetto prevede la valorizzazione e lo studio di forme di fruizione innovative e inclusive tramite l'impiego di tecnologie e strumenti digitali per ricreare in 3D l'area sommitale della collina e raccontare ad un pubblico eterogeneo la sua lunga storia. Da un lato l'obiettivo è dunque quello di realizzare un serious game che permetta ai giocatori di immergersi nel passato e di imparare giocando come si svolgesse la vita di coloro che vivevano qui nel Medioevo. Dall'altro lato l'obiettivo è quello di creare dei virtual tour che permettono al pubblico di muoversi in un ambiente interattivo ed esplorare lo spazio e le strutture anche a distanza. Il Parco di Poggi Bonzi è sempre stato all'avanguardia nell'impiego delle tecnologie digitali eh, in ambito archeologico, sia nel campo della ricerca, tanto per quello della comunicazione e del coinvolgimento del pubblico. Il progetto CAPI pertanto si qualifica come l'ennesimo sforzo in questa direzione che mira a rendere il sito sempre più coinvolgente eh, e accessibile possibile. Eh, le tecnologie digitali sono uno strumento utilissimo perché permettono di colmare quel gap tra il passato e il presente e perché permettono, a fronte ovviamente di uno studio eh, che deve essere accurato e che deve essere gestito da eh, personale qualificato e da professionisti, di rendere leggibili a tutti eh, le tracce del passato. In questi tempi di pandemia soprattutto ci siamo resi conto di quanto appunto questo eh, apporto delle tecnologie digitali sia stato utile per permettere di continuare a fruire anche a distanza di quello che è il patrimonio culturale. La sfida per il futuro è certamente grande ma l'obiettivo che abbiamo è quello di permettere un'accessibilità più, eh, più possibile democratica a tutto il patrimonio culturale. E in questo senso riteniamo che eh, le tecnologie digitali, se sfruttate ovviamente con criterio, possano aiutare eh, a realizzare questo obiettivo. Digital technology is giving us large possibilities in the field of presentation as well as preservation, especially preventive preservation of cultural heritage. Uh, but not only that, it can make easier our scientific work and help us to preserve cultural heritage through the process of digitalization. Interpretation of cultural heritage and audience development, above all to younger population, without the usage of digital technologies is practically unthinkable in the near future. Uh, during the pandemic period we are all witnessing, uh, we were forced to turn uh, contents uh, to digital. We were forced to communicate with the audience only through digital platforms and uh, this have opened some new horizons and opportunities for us and showed direction for the future. Among others, uh, there is special role in uh, usage of gaming engineering tool in cultural heritage purposes, such as history, teaching and learning, enhanced museum visits, but also in the field of scientific archaeological research. Usage of serious games uh, during archaeological research is a method that gives us a lot of possibilities for non-destructive research of the past. We have a lot of possibilities in developing archaeo gaming on sites in our territory. Uh, Paracin is a municipality located in the central Serbia and we have more than 120 known archaeological sites from Paleolithic period till the Middle Age. Uh, especially uh, there are good possibilities on the Neolithic site of Drenovac, uh, who is more than 60 acres uh, in the vicinity of Highway Corridor 10, 
uh, and in the Middle Age site Petrus, one of the biggest upland Middle Age fortresses in Serbia, surrounded by dozens of Middle Age monasteries. Uh, we have already developing this project to a new establishment uh, Archaeo Gaming Center in the Museum of Paracin and uh, we are working on international collaboration. Uh, besides gaming, we are currently working on several other projects using digital technologies. Uh, we have finished the project uh, Industrial History of Paracin in which we have used augmented reality as heritage interpretation tool. Economic history is one of the most important aspects of Parachin identity, but it has not been sufficiently documented, valorized and presented to the general public. Uh, the exhibition is accompanied uh, by interactive publication and a free Android application that uh, contributes to the reconstruction of the cultural heritage of the city's architectures uh, in sight, on the spot where these buildings once were and what they look like. Uh, there are 20 on-site spots uh, where people can see old architecture of Parachin City. Uh, another project is uh, we are currently working on is project uh, Virtual Glass Museum uh, with the support of our Ministry of Culture. Uh, besides the presentation and digitalization of glass artifacts, uh, we will reconstruct the artifacts using only remaining sketches, as well as history of the glass factory uh, through time using 3D surrounding. Another ongoing similar project is Middle Age Petrus. Uh, we will use 3D modeling to reconstruct Middle Age fortresses, uh, as well as surrounding monasteries and artifacts excavated uh, in the past. It will help us perceiving this site in the future research and presentation. Archeo Gaming is field in which uh, my museum and me are planning to dedicate special attention in the near future. I believe that Archeo Gaming Center will bring creative industries and cultural heritage and empower intersectional relations between these two sectors, especially at the regional level of Pomeravlje. Uh, serious gaming includes uh, virtual and augmented reality, artificial intelligence and real-time computer graphics. It can help us reconstruct the past. We can create 3D surrounding that can help us perceive processes that occurred in the past in a better way. The possibilities are huge, especially in the field of experimental archaeology. The reverse process is the usage of archaeological artifacts and knowledge in gaming industries for commercial and educational use. In the field of museology, serious gaming can help us enhance visits to the museums and archaeological sites. Uh, the popularity of video games among younger people especially uh, makes this field ideal for educational purposes. We need to keep the focus on digital contents. Uh, gaming is definitely not just for fun, as a lot of colleagues might think. Uh, serious gaming, as well as other digital technology, provide us a lot of possibility for serious scientific work. And who can blame us if we have a little fun along the way? Thank you for your attention.